unlike protein purification for ribosome purification, I'm actually going to be using this machine, uh, which makes gradients. Um, you can make like sucrose gradients and then use that um, to purify the ribosomes. First, you make a protein. So let's talk about it. I'm learning so much already um, in my postdoc, and one of the things I'm learning a lot about is ribosomes and how to study them and how to purify them. So what is a ribosome? So a ribosome is the protein making machinery inside of our cells. And so as I discussed yesterday, it's actually this complex of RNA and protein. And in the process of translation, it travels along messenger RNA um, and uses the instructions in the messenger RNA to piece together the corresponding amino acids, so the corresponding protein letters, in order to get this um, growing chain that then folds up into a functional protein. So the ribosome, it actually has these two halves. So it's got a bunch of different pieces, but it has these two main um, subparts, the large ribosomal sub unit um, and the small ribosomal subunit. And so this large subunit, it has the peptidyl transferase center. So basically this is where the peptide is actually going to get transferred um, from, the, from the incoming tRNA. So this amino acid is going to get pushed on to put onto here. And then this whole thing's going to shift over. So there's these three sites on the um, on the ribosome E, P, and A. The um, in the P, that's where the growing chain is held initially. And then this new tRNA is going to come in this A. And then this is going the chain's going to get transferred to the A. Everything's going to get pushed over. Um, and then the old one's going to go out the E. And there's a bunch of different elongation factors and initiation factors and other things that are actually um, getting things to move along and stuff. Um, but this ribosome itself is helping catalyze that transfer. And the actual site where that transfer is happening is in this large ribosomal subunit. Uh, but that doesn't mean the small subunit's not important. The small subunit has the decoding center. So this is where the tRNA is going to bind to the messenger RNA. Um, and if it's a match, it's going to get added. And so the diff details between the prokaryotic and eukaryotic differ when it comes to the ribosomal makeup. So with prokaryotic um, ribosomes, so we're talking about like bacteria mainly here, um, they have slightly smaller ribosomes. So they have what we, their full ribosome. So when you have the small and the large, this is called the 70S. Um, and in the eukaryotic, this is called the ADS. So the prokaryotic, the large subunits, 50S, and the small ones, 30S. In eukaryotic, so like plants and animals, um, we have like 60S and 40S. This S refers to these Feldberg units, which relates indirectly to their size. Um, it's based on like the sedimentation rate. So how heavy they are uh, makes the heavier you are, the, the like further you sink in the, during the sedimentation. And so bigger things are going to sink more, but it's not like a linear relationship. And so this is why we have like 50 plus 30. You're like, that doesn't equal 70. That's why. In terms of what these are actually made up of, so these, pro these are made, both of these are going to be made up of protein and RNA. So in mammals, we have in our 60S, we have these three um, ribosomal RNAs, so our RNAs, 28S, 5S, 5.8S. Um, and then we have a fourth um, rRNA in our 40S subunit, so this 18S rRNA. Um, and you can see the sizes of these. Um, so some of them are really big, like um, the 28S is like over 5,000 nucleotides, so over 5,000 RNA letters. But this, um, this 5S is only about 121. And so you can see here too, we have this S for these like Svelbergs. And so the bigger it is, the, um, the more nucleotides it actually contains. In addition to those rRNAs, you have proteins. And so in the eukaryotic 60S, there are 47 proteins. And in the 40S, there are 33 proteins. And so this is what we're trying to, this is what I'm going to be studying is this ribosomes. And if I want to study these ribosomes, I want a way to be able to purify them. So I've talked a lot about purifying proteins in the past and the ribosome has proteins, but the type of purification that I'm going to be doing isn't what I've showed you in the past when I've done like recombinant protein expression. Instead, it's going to be using these sucrose gradients. So when it comes to, when I mean my recombinant, isn't 
In this case, um, with recombinant protein expression, I would actually stick in the instructions for making a protein that I want um, and get the cells to make it. And I would often have, I would attach a tag to make purifying it easier. When it comes, and then I would have this little bit of protein that I would then um, try to weasel out of the cells. But when it comes to ribosomes, our, the cells are already chock full of ribosomes and they make it already. And so I can purify out the natural ribosomes and I don't even have to go through as many complicated purification steps because it is so abundant and because it's so big. So with all those proteins, um, like close to around 80 proteins and those um, for RNAs, it's, it's really big. So the, the human one's about 4.3 megadaltons. So this is really big. And so I'm going to take advantage of that using a sucrose um, cushion. And then I can further separate the ribosomes, like the complete ones versus the individual subunits with the gradients. And so I'll talk more about that in a minute. But the initial part is going to be the same, is that we're going to have to break open the cells and then centrifuge it. Um, and so when we break open the cells, you can basically, you can centrifuge it in different ways, depending on whether you want to isolate out the, um, the various fractions, like the mitochondria and that sort of thing. But what's really important is that you're going to pellet out the nucleus and your nuclei, um, and you're going to pedal it out like the cell membrane bits after you break the cell open. So one of the other really, really abundant proteins is your, our histone proteins, and those are going to be in the nucleus. So this is all the DNA and stuff, and we don't want to mess with that. We want to mess with the cytoplasmic stuff, where, which is where the protein um, making is happening. And so we can use specific um, centrifugation speeds and that sort of thing in order to get it to pellet how we want it without like disrupting those nuclei. When we do this, so we break open these cells, depending on what type of cells you're using, this is going to vary um, how you're going to actually do this. And so in the case of like mammalian cells, you would use some sort of detergent probably. With bacteria cells and yeast cells and stuff, you have to, um, it's a little harder. They, they don't like to break up, at, um, at break open as easily. But once you break the cells open, now you need to isolate out the ribosomes from all the other stuff. And you can do this because they're super duper big. So what you can use is a sucrose cushion. So basically you have this solution of sucrose and then you have, you um, put this, put your liquid, put this lysate. So this, um, after you lyse it open, you take this liquid part and you're gonna put it on this cushion. This cushion basically, it, this is a discontinuous gradient. So there's like this, constant, this is going to be really dense and this is going to be not so dense. So this is going to be if things are dense and then they're denser enough that they can actually, they're denser than the glucose, then they're going to actually go through and they'll pellet out in here. But you get a better separation from everything else because normally, like if you were doing this, it would be easier to for things to kind of mix and that sort of thing. But when you have this cushion, the ribosomes are gonna get all settled nicely in here, then everything else is gonna be kind of above it. Um, and so it's easier to that you get a more pure um, thing. But you're going to have ribosomes that are but that have like the, everything so that they're complete. They have the 60S and the 40S, or if you're doing bacteria, they'll have the 50S and the 30S. And then you'll have those individually. And so here to separate these, you can use a sucrose gradient. So here you're using a continuous gradient. Um, so you have this, you get this gradient using the gradient maker, you can actually get it to make this gradient. What's gonna happen is then it's gonna separate these out um, because they uh, have different densities and they'll separate out here. Here it was more like a yes or no, like are you dense enough that you're, gonna, you're denser than this? Or here it's like you get more options because as you go down the solution, the higher and higher concentrations of the sucrose, and this is gonna make it um, denser and so then things are gonna come out. In this machine, um, so this machine's pretty cool. I haven't like physically used it yet, um, but we even had something similar in my old lab. Um, but it has, a, you can make this gradient. It's gonna like spin these tubes really fast and stuff. And then you can actually have it so that it's going to fractionate.
So it'll suck the liquid out um, and then it'll send it through a UV detector so you can actually see where the, um, where the ribosomes are coming out. And then you can collect those fractions. So you'll see different fractions corresponding to the different um, things. Then what you want to do is you want to like you precipitate that out. So with like polyethylene glycol or PEG, you can kind of get it to precipitate out and then resuspend it. So put it in whatever buffer that you want. Um, and then you have your pure, pure, purified um, ribosomes to work with. Um, one note, so I've talked a bit about sucrose, de about density gradient centrifugation before in the context of ribosomes, but there I was talking about polysome profiling, which where it was you try to kind of figure out how many messenger RNA or how many ribosomes are on a messenger RNA. And so if messenger RNAs are being trans, um, translated a lot, you're going to have a lot of, of ribosomes on them. And we call this like a polysome. Whereas if they only have like a single, they're um, likely less highly translated. And so we call these like a monosome and they can also separate these individual subunits. So when we're doing the like the ribosome purification, we don't want our ribosomes to be attached to all of this giant uh, mRNA. So what we do is we actually use harsher conditions. So you use like a high salt um, concentration, but you, uh, much higher than you would use when you were doing a, a polysome profiling where you use gentler conditions and keep everything like kind of on here, um, as opposed to trying to isolate the ribosomes. Here you're trying to isolate the mRNAs containing the ribosomes. And so these both use a similar type of gradient. Um, and so I'm going to, if I get to do both of them, probably, um, then I'll get to use this machine for lots of different things. Um, and so I'm really excited about learning these new techniques, um, learning more about the ribosome, and hopefully discovering some cool stuff. So I can't tell you like specifics about my project, but I'm really, really stoked. Um, and yeah, so hopefully this was helpful and probably in the future once I actually have done this and instead of just like reading and talking to people about it, um, then I will be able to show you more details as to how this purification, like what it actually looks like when it's going on. Um, but at this point, I'm just in that like learning and it helps me learn to um, talk it out. Um, so hope that helped and yeah.